Welcome to the third module of VMware vSAN Deploy and Manage. We are entering to the topic. In this topic, we are going to discuss about VMware vSAN. In the beginning, we talked about the importance of software defined data center and the three pillars that comes in a software defined data center. Storage is one of the pillar in a software defined data center. Either we call it as a software defined storage or virtual SAN. In the last video, I give you a detailed explanation about the traditional architecture of a SAN. And I hope that module will give you a minimum information that required uh, uh, to start with VMware vSAN. The main objective of this module is to give you an understanding of VMware vSAN, its architecture and the components. And also we will talk about the different type of architecture, hybrid and all flash. So you can create a VMware vSAN with a combination of flash and rotating magnetic disk or all flash architecture. Then we will talk about the space efficiency features of VMware vSAN. Let us start from the traditional storage architecture to see how it is working with the VMware EXSI host and virtual machines. Look at the traditional storage in the slide. It can be a fiber channel storage or fiber channel over ethernet storage or iSCSI or a direct attached storage. Whatever the storage, the next step is to create a logical unit, LAN. It can be either through a RAID controller or a storage processor, depend upon your traditional storage. Once you create the logical unit, the next step is to connect this to the EXSI host and make it available. So based upon your storage, either you create a, a iSCSI IQN or give, give access or you uh, prepare zoning to give access to this LAN to the EXSI host. Whatever it is, the next step once the LAN is available to the EXSI host, the next step you rescan the storage devices from the EXSI host, then you can see the storage in the EXSI host. Then you create a data store based upon the EXSI version and then you install the virtual machine on the data store. So this data store is available to other EXSI hosts like a shared data store because it is shared between the EXSI host. So whenever there is a failure of EXSI host, the virtual machine can be run on the other EXSI host because both of them sharing the same data store. So let us start VMware vSAN. VMware vSAN is a software based distributed storage solution. It means you don't need a dedicated box actually to run a vSAN or your storage because this is a software based solution. It means you can run it anywhere any x86 hardware you can run vmware vsan look at the next point it is built in directly to the hypervisor so when you install an exsi in a server it means the vsan is there already if you have license you can start using it from by enabling from the vmware vcenter the next point is it pulls hard disk or flash or normal magnetic disk into a shared data store so what is happening here is it aggregates all the storage devices attached to the EXSI host. For example, you have three EXSI hosts and each EXSI host is attached with a, a two 10 GB hard disk. So the total capacity will be 60 GB. So when you create a vSAN cluster data store, you will get a 60 GB uh, clustered vSAN data store space. So it pulls the or it aggregates the local attached storage devices into a shared data store. The next point is it managed through per VM storage policies. When you look at the traditional architecture, if you want to create RAID 1, high performance uh, disk, or if you want to create uh, a low performance like RAID 5 or 6, you apply this policy on the logical unit device or the disk not on the virtual machine so all the virtual machines running on a raid 1 disk will have high performance and all the virtual machines running on a raid 5 will have a low performance and when you need to change the characteristics of the disk it is a risky job you need to uh, remove all the virtual machines and you need to recreate this uh, disk but the beauty of vmware vsan is if you want a raid 1 you can apply this to a virtual machine so you right click a virtual machine and you say I need this as a RAID 1. And if you want the next virtual machine as a RAID 5, you just right click on that virtual machine and say I need this RAID 5. 
So this policy is applied on virtual machine basis, not to the logical disk. This is highly integrated with VMware stack, so you don't need to go and deal with the extra softwares. And this delivers enterprises grade scale and performance. So it means whatever is available with the traditional legacy storage architecture box, uh, you get everything high performance and you can run most of the critical workloads using VMware vSAN. In a traditional storage, if you want to protect a virtual machine, you keep the virtual machine into a data store and this data store is protected with the RAID concept in a storage box. So if you need performance, then you go for RAID 1. If performance is not a matter and you prefer more capacity, then you go for RAID 5 or 6. The same concept is followed in vSAN architecture. The only difference is the RAID is distributed over the network. For example, in vSAN, if you want to protect a virtual machine, we can more clearly say when you apply a storage policy, it is applied to virtual disk. So when you want to protect a virtual machine, a policy is applied to a virtual disk based upon the policy. For example, if it is RAID 1, it keep an another copy of VMDK in another EXSI host. For example, you can see in the picture it is EXSI 03 and this is synchronized over the network. That is why we call it as a RAID over the network or distributed RAID and it is an object based storage. VMware vSAN have two type of architecture, all flash and hybrid architecture. In an all flash design, all the storage devices are SSDs. In a hybrid architecture, SSD is used for cache purpose and capacity layer is filled up with low performance magnetic disk like SAS or SATA. Next is about VMware vSAN objects. As I told you in the beginning, VMware vSAN is an object based storage. So the entire virtual machine files are considered as five objects. The first object is VM home namespace. All the files excluding VMDK, Delta, memory, swap are considered as VM home namespace files. For example, .vms file, .log files, snapshot delta descriptor file. Such files resides in an area and that area is considered as a VM home namespace. And this is the first object. Second is the swap space of a virtual machine. And this space is only utilized when you power up the machine. That is the second object. The third object is virtual machines VMDK and Delta disk or a snapshot. This is uh, the disk you could create when, uh, when you uh, take a snapshot of a virtual machine. These are the four objects and the another object that is not shown here is a witness. So this five objects are considered as a VMware vSAN storage objects. Why I'm explaining this objects is when you apply a policy, a storage policy to a virtual machine, the policy is going to apply on these objects, but it will not apply on VM home namespace or VM swap or uh, uh, witness. These are protected in a way using default storage policy. When you apply a storage policy that is going to apply on VMDK. That is why I told you in the previous slide, the storage policies are applied on virtual machines and more clearly we can say it is applied to the VMDK of virtual machine. VMware vSAN can be designed and implemented in two ways. You can go for a hybrid. It means a combination of rotating disk and SSD. Or you can go for a all flash architecture. Whether it is a hybrid or all flash architecture, you need minimum one cache device and a capacity device. So we can divide this into two tiers, cache tier and capacity tier. So in a vSAN, you need minimum one capacity device and one cache device. A capacity tier support from SATA up to SAS in all flash architecture, all the hard disk or all the storage devices attached are SSDs. In a hybrid, it is supported from SATA to SAS and based upon this, the performance also varies. In all flash, the cache will be a write cache only because the disks are high performing so write cache is enough. In a hybrid architecture, the cache is divided for both write and read cache. So when your virtual machine writes something to the VMDK, it will be written to the SSD which means the cache tier. 
then it is destaged into the capacity tier. So in each host, you can have five disk group maximum and each disk group should have at least one SSD and one capacity device. There are servers which can handle 24 or more than uh, 24 hard disk. So if each uh, disk group can handle eight hard disk only, then you need to create multiple disk group. And in each disk group, you need one SSD and capacity tier, you can go up to seven hard disk. Next is about the space efficiency techniques that uh, is used to reduce the amount of space for uh, storing data. Deduplication and compression, RAID 5 or RAID 6. When you enable deduplication and compression on a vSAN cluster, it can eliminate the duplicate data and reduce the amount of space required to store data. And RAID 5 or RAID 6 provide a clearly defined space saving over RAID 1. So when you create a virtual machine and you configure RAID 1, it means it distributes a mirrored copy of uh, VMDK into a second EXSI host. This will occupy twice the size of the VMDK. It means 200 percentage. So when you choose RAID 5, there will be a performance, a degraded performance, but at the same time, the capacity requirement will be lesser than RAID 1. Let's see one by one. vSAN can perform a block level deduplication and compression to save storage space. So when you enable deduplication and compression on a vSAN all flash cluster, redundant data within the each disk group is reduced. So deduplication removes the redundant data block, whereas compression removes the additional redundant data within each data block. So these techniques work together to reduce the amount of space required to store the data. vSAN applies deduplication and then compression as it moves data from the cache tier to the capacity tier. So there will be no write delay because uh, during the D stage, the compression and deduplications are applied. You can enable deduplication and compression as a cluster wide settings, but they are applied only on the disk group basis. So if you apply deduplication and compression on a cluster, it will be applied only on the disk group basis. So when you enable deduplication and compression on a vSAN cluster, actually the redundant data within the particular disk group is reduced to a single copy. You can enable deduplication and compression when you create a new vSAN all flash cluster or when you can when you edit an existing vSAN all flash cluster. So when you enable or disable a deduplication and compression, vSAN perform a rolling reformat of every disk group on every host. So depending upon the data stored on the vSAN data store, this process might take a long time and it is not recommended to perform this uh, activity frequently. If you plan to disable deduplication and compression, you must verify, you must first verify that enough physical capacity is available to place your data. In VMware vSAN, the virtual machines or the VMDKs are protected by a RAID concept. By default, a RAID 1 is applied to a virtual machine. At the same time, you can use RAID 5 or RAID 6 to protect against the data loss. And at the same time, you can increase the storage efficiency. Because RAID 5 and RAID 6 can provide you same level of data protection as mirroring in RAID 1. But it, at the same time, it use a very less storage capacity. RAID 5 or RAID 6 uh, enable vSAN to tolerate the failures of up to two capacity devices in the data store. So you can configure RAID 5 on an all flash cluster with uh, four minimum EXSI host. You can configure RAID 6 with uh, six uh, minimum EXSI host. For RAID 1, the minimum requirement is a uh, three EXSI host only. So when you compare the consumption of capacity in RAID 1, it is 200 percentage. At the same time, RAID 5 requires only a 133 percentage of the size of VMDK. When you learn something, understanding the concept and architecture is more important than anything. So in this module, we already covered vSAN architecture and its components, difference between the hybrid and all flash architecture, and also the space efficiency features of vSAN.